All right, hi, welcome back to another ex episode of COVID Council. I'm here with the amazing, the incomparable Frontline Lisi. So Frontline, I have a question here. One of one of my viewers posted, um, I asked a question about how do you, how are your kids handling this epidemic or pandemic, whatever you, wh whichever you want to call it. One of my, one of my viewers said, our kids are grown 25 and 29. They're taking this serious and are not happy with the Gen X who do not. Do you know who the Gen X is? I kind of don't. It's basically our generation. Okay, wait, so the way I back up. They're not happy with our generation, okay? That's what it says. Move on. They are not happy with the Gen X who do not apparently take this serious. Well, I take it serious. I'm Gen X. I'm Gen X, which I think is 1965 to 1980. Uh -huh. So I'm Gen X. You may have missed it by a little. I'm not going to date you. Please don't. Although I enjoy dating you. But they're saying our Gen X does not take it serious. Well, I certainly do. That's why That's why we have COVID counsel. That's why we're doing the show. Correct. Uh, but let's hear the comments. I have a niece that is a senior in high school. She is depressed with having her senior prom and graduation canceled. Okay, so let's tackle that first. Like, okay. Like if you were in high school, how would you feel about... Something like, like your prom or your graduation being canceled, because apparently that's what's happening. Well, everything's canceled. I mean, everything is canceled. So our nephew has a senior, our college graduation, four years of working his AA off, and he doesn't even get a celebration to honor what he's done and achieved. It's sad. What I would do is I would, and I will tell you, I'm going to give credits to a gal that I went to high school with, um, you have to make the best of where we are right now because we have to keep our distance. We have to stay away from people. So Gally went to high school with, it was her husband's birthday and they live in, I think they live in this kind of a big neighborhood and they did a, all the neighbors and friends just drove down the street, honk, happy birthday, happy birthday. You got to make the best of it. You know? Make the best of it. You got to make the best of it. Because here's the deal. You know what? Okay, yeah. Sad. I didn't go to prom. Did, am I like... Did you not get invited? I got invited. I just didn't go. Yeah, I didn't go. Okay, I'm not going to touch that with a 10-foot pole. No, I just it wasn't the person I want. Anyway, let's not go there. <laughs> I didn't either, by the way. Perfect. That's where I'm at. Woohoo! We have our own prom. From nine, Lisa, ladies so, and gentlemen. My thing is, is that maybe... You know, some friends could get together at a big house or big, someone that's got a big piece of property. Maybe the parents can, you know. But it doesn't have to be a big piece of property. Well, to keep the distance. Hmm. What I'm trying to say is the video that this gal showed was at their house. Their house is in Chandler. It's a big house. Big Chandler, yard. Arizona. Yeah. Chandler, Arizona. Big yard. And I thought it was so cute. They had their family over. They have a bunch of kids and grandkids and what have you. And the neighbors just drove down the street, drove in their little cul-de-sac, their little drive, and wished them a happy birthday. You, you got to make the best of the situation. So if you really, really want a prom, gather some friends in your school. Make your own prom. Make your own prom. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice, friend line. Yeah. Well, let me continue with the question. I think that's very sage advice. Um, the question continues, or the comment, I should say, my younger nieces slash nephews, who are 6 to 16, are not liking being homeschooled. Let's talk about that for a second. Okay. So there's homeschooling going on now. Okay. Well, here's the deal. Okay. And by the way, I saw a one of my friends posted on Facebook that his wife's a teacher and she is now teaching like elementary school level via a software program has about 30 kids and she's basically sitting at her kitchen table teaching the kids and I, I don't know if this is I asked is it effective and he told me it's not summer yet well it, okay let's talk about that okay so you and I don't have children so and I'm not going to speak for parents I think the parents are going a little cray cray is because it is not summer yet. And so their kids are home, husbands are home because they're working from home. Wives are going, oh my gosh, what the heck, get out of my house, you guys normally leave every day and I can get stuff done for myself. I mean, you guys have kids 
it's your responsibility. It's, I mean, yes, I get kids go to school, but as a parent, you know, figure out a way to make some fun. I, I'm seeing people doing art with their kids. I'm seeing people that are doing like playing chalk, games. One of my friends games. was playing clue with right. their kids. A game from our generation. Doing chalk art on the streets for neighbors across the street. Like going across the street and like, let's make this, let's make the best of this situation. And it's, it's easy to do because I'm sure you didn't have a kid to go have a teacher raise them for eight months of the year. Great point. Great point. All right. Well, let's go on. There's further, there's more comments here. This is why I picked this question. I think it was a great, it was a great comment and a lot of things packed in here. So I want to touch on them. Now the statement continues. My sister-in-law works nights as a 911 dispatcher. So dealing with the kids during the day is very hard. Mm -hmm. Her hubby, my brother, helps the best he can as he is working part-time at home on a on part-time on site. My other niece who is a junior in college is home now. This is a junior in college. Home now since classes and swimming, she's there on a swim scholarship, are canceled. Um, question, so you go to college and you expect certain things, uh, swimming, enhancing your swimming skills, maybe one. You want to get to the Olympics. You know, the college told you you're going to get there. Does the college owe you any type of refund no. for this? No. Why not? I don't think so. Well, but, you know, there was the video that you did about some sort of a getting out of contracts. But I'm assuming you want to graduate. You want to have a college degree. So you're not really wanting you're not wanting to sue your university because of this situation. You're trying to make the best of what Well you're most doing. likely they would not be able to retaliate. For you raising a very legitimate issue. You like you can't go in the swimming pools, you can't keep in shape. These are the reasons why people are paying you top dollar. Mm -hmm. Have the have the universities and colleges reduced tuition? Have they given any sort of refund, any anything? Any, co any compensation to anyone for not providing the services they agreed to provide, or are they just going to blame it on someone else? Right, but 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 it's a, that's a catch twenty two because yes, you went to college for a swimming scholarship. We have we have friends of ours; their twin daughters went to a very high school for for track running. They got scholarships for that. Mm -hmm. um, they graduated. If they were to go there on their parents' dime. And this all happened. The parents would probably have a problem problem with it, but at the end of the day, the kids want they want degrees. So if you go to a school on a scholarship, you're not paying for the, for your education. Well, that raises a good point. If it's a scholarship, then yeah, that's a little bit and different. Think, is that not what the question was? Or well, no? no, it wasn't. Um, was it? It was a scholarship. Yeah, yeah, swim scholarship. Okay, well. So if you're on a scholarship, I like the distinction you're drawing. If they're on a scholarship. Perhaps they have no grounds to complain. Everything's for free, and so you have no reason to complain. However, if you're like most people that are not on a scholarship, don't they have grounds to say you didn't prom? I didn't get what you promised for fifty thousand dollars a year, for twenty thousand a year. Don't you owe me some sort of restitution? I do not think that people people are owed that because I will tell you at the end of the day, a kid wants to graduate, they want to have a, a, a degree, they want to have their, their certificate to go to be a doctor, a lawyer, whatever, okay? That college certificate gives you the ability to go do things that the average person can't do. And so, yes, this hiccup happened in my education and I had to homeschool or had to go online for, you know, a two months or a month and a half I didn't get the experience of college. Well, guess what? But you got a certificate and you got a degree. So you can actually go get a job and maybe better yourself. I mean, I, this whole thing is horrible and it's sad. And I feel sorry for kids that are, you know, in college, out getting, you know, law school, doctorate school, you know, medical school. It's just so sad. But at the end of the day, we all have to make the best of it in some form or fashion. So your message is suck it up, Buttercup. Well, it, it, well, that's a little harsh, but I just, every day is different. We gotta like kind of all get to, all stick together. We have to all try and stay away from each other so we can, you know, lessen this virus, whatever it is and whatever the situation is. 
and try and kill it off if we can. And, you know, if, if, if being quarantined and, you know, schools closed, restaurants closed and all that kind of stuff, if that's going to help the situation and get us back to normal, we all have to do it. We all have to do it. We're up here in Flagstaff. I mean, we're taking walks here and there, but for the most part, we're staying inside. You know, we aren't... As I say, it's no time to be a maverick. I hear some people say, well, I don't know what to do. Should I do this? Should I... Hey, look, don't be a maverick. Stay in. It's a good time to reconnect with your family and your friends, your loved ones, your kids. Good time for you to relax, read a book, work on your podcast as we're doing right now, as a matter of fact. Well, interjection, real quick. Sure. Back to the whole homeschooling family, that whole thing. As a family, this is your time to unplug, get rid of the, the devices, get, the, get rid of all that. Go watch a movie, go watch a Disney movie, go play games, go play, build a puzzle. Go, go be a family because that's what we did the X generation. So we did, we played all day long. We were not on the TV. We had no devices. Like connect with your family, connect, connect with your children. And get creative. Get creative, yes. Well, very nice. Well, I'm gonna just finish off uh, Frontline Lisi, ladies and gentlemen, that was fantastic. Now you see why I love her and why she's my wife and also my top employee just about every single month. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to read just the end here. All we can do is keep positive and communicate often so family and friends know that while we are not there in person, we are not alone either. And I just want to just this comment hit me so nicely because it packed so much in there. So and thank you for the comment. That? Yeah, my, oh, uh, awesome. yeah. And by the way, I spend a lot of time on Facebook because, um, yes, we work a lot and make sure our clients are taken care of, but I like to know what's going on out there in the world and it affects, you know, where, where things go. So I found that to be a great, um, comment. Le Frontline Lisa, anything else? No, I just, I, let's, let's all stay positive. Let's all, um, not bash the president. I've seen people on Facebook that I just, and I'm disgusted. I don't care if you like him or you don't. Bottom line is he's our, the president of the United States. And in my opinion, I think he's doing a stellar job in this situation. And, and Mike Pence is doing very well. Uh, uh, and Mike Pence, Mike Pence. And keeping the calm. He's very calm. Yeah. And he, yeah, it's just. I see people on Facebook kind of like, oh, oh, Trump made some comment. No, this person did this. You know what? We all make mistakes. Let's come together as a country and and let's not, let's, let's figure out a way to get past this. We all need to get back to business. There are so many businesses that, that, are, that are closed. No employees are on unemployment. We have got to support our leaders and our leader is Donald and Trump. keep an eye on the leaders though however this is definitely time to be a watchdog as well because there's there's bills being passed there's laws being passed you need to be aware of them mm -hmm. and you need to see if they make sense there's bailout bills that are going left and left and right now we're wondering now trillions and we're not talking about hundreds of millions we're talking about trillions of dollars being thrown around so i think it's a good time for all of us to to watchdog this Facebook's my play, favorite place to do it. I think Twitter is a little too, little too nasty, but Facebook can be nasty as well. But I think it's a good time to connect to a source and stay in tune and see what's going on. So we have a side attorney, Steve. Uh, you can search me up, uh, Steve Vondren on Facebook. Frontline Lisa is there as well all the time, pitching in, giving comments. Let's be nice. Let's be critical. Let's be watchdogs. But ultimately, and let's supportive. let's be supportive. Come together. Yes. It's us versus the virus. That's right. That's right. Okay. We're on the same team. Same team, guys. Thank you for listening. This has been another exciting episode of COVID Council with AttorneySteve.com and Frontline Lisa. Have a great evening.